Sean constantly intercepted Israel Adesanya's lead hand from both orthodox and southpaw position. It didn't matter which stance Adesanya was coming in, he'd constantly intercept that lead hand to prevent Israel Adesanya from measuring the distance between the two and gauging the range. And immediately after, Strickland would never take a backward step, he would constantly apply pressure and push Israel Adesanya backwards after intercepting that lead hand of his. And ultimately, distance management was crucial in this fight where Sean kept this in boxing range rather than kickboxing range. And you can see that as he withdraws his lead leg here to avoid that kick from Israel Adesanya, he's immediately back on him with a raised knee, braced in expectancy of a low kick, but also giving Izzy something to think about as he makes his next entry. Now you can see Adesanya go up top here with a high kick that Sean swipes down with both arms at. And expecting Adesanya to follow up with something else, you can see him look to intercept that lead hand there as Adesanya switches to southpaw. And as this kick comes in then he's then in a better position to catch the kick that comes in and then you'll see that Strickland doesn't take a back step and he pushes Izzy back to the fence line and that's exactly where he wants Adesanya he doesn't want him at kickboxing range he wants him at boxing range in a closer proximity and now you're about to see as Adesanya tries circling out along the fence line Sean Strickland meets him jab for jab and then afterwards he looks to follow up with the right hand and shortly afterwards we then see Sean begin to dual threat where he into intercepts Izzy's lead hand in southpaw upstairs and then feints a jabbing front kick at him. And that squares up Adesanya's body as he wants to maximise the extension that he can put between himself and the jabbing front kick he's expecting to the midsection. Although that's a decoy by Sean so that he can then get through that guard in the middle that's been raised with a jab and then follow up with the right hand afterwards in boxing range. And switching back over to the Jan Blachowicz fight, you can see that Jan Blachowicz was biting heavily on Israel Adesanya's feints at the beginning of the fight, where the hip feints were putting oceans of distance between Jan and Israel Adesanya. There was a lot of distance between them. And this allowed Adesanya to ping Jan from kickboxing range at long range with shots, and it kept putting him on the back foot, and so ultimately that prompted a switch up then tactically. Whereby around the third round, Jan Blachowicz began to stop biting on the feints of Adesanya, and ultimately that put him more into a boxing range. And if you're in punching range, you're also in takedown range, and that was a massive threat which Jan Blachowicz posed to Izzy. You can see him landing his own shots there in boxing range. And then incrementally as the fight drew on, whenever Adesanya was trying to ping Jan from long range, you can see that immediately after swiping at the shot, Jan would close the distance. And this is something that Sean Strickland cottoned onto in his game plan. He didn't want to take a back step and wanted to keep this in boxing range. And so Sean borrowed that element of the Jan Blachowicz game plan in not taking a back step, although for different reasons. Like you can see here, Jan was dual threatening upstairs and that set up the takedowns easier as the punch came first changing Izzy's attention upstairs although Sean didn't shoot anything on Izzy in the fight as Strickland was intent on keeping this in boxing range as he had a game plan specifically for that and it was all built around intercepting the lead hand of Izzy in orthodox or southpaw and then Israel Adesanya had to change the lane of his attacks as he withdrew after being intercepted and then coming off the center line that allowed Sean Strickland to anticipate them better with a raised knee as he slipped on the outside of that left hand of Israel Adesanya and then used his left hand as a decoy just to pull down the right guard of Izzy and that allowed Sean Strickland to then follow up with the right hand that landed and this kind of range management really frustrated Izzy and if we go back to the example earlier where he threw that front kick that Sean intercepted. What does he do after? Stays in the pocket, doesn't keep it at kickboxing range, and intercepts the lead hand of Izzy. He's making it a little bit shorter so he can then catch the kick that comes in. And now ultimately he's got Adesanya trapped on one leg and that leaves him with no other option than to backpedal towards the fence line and that's more in towards Sean Strickland's favour because there's less scope for manoeuvre. And even when Israel Adesanya was circling around the inner octagon lines or the fence line, Sean would intercept that lead hand of his as he was trying to measure even when he was circling not always stationary this example is in southpaw position and then the following example you'll see that in orthodox Izzy now has to lunge in a little bit more because he's not happy with the range and Sean leaves his lead arm extended fully to stop Adesanya's jab from getting through and then ultimately he overextends on the right hand leaving himself as a sitting duck 
With a long retraction time to get his guard back up and Sean Strickland then counters him with a hook in response and that lands on Izzy. And straight punches beat looping punches. You saw that a lot in this fight with linear shots from Sean whereas Izzy was coming wider with a longer distance to travel for the punch and Sean beat him to the shot as a result. And that was the shot that dropped Izzy but it's also worth considering as soon as it did that Izzy then scooted towards the fence line as he was anticipating a takedown potentially and Izzy always defends takedowns better along the fence line but instead it was ground and pound. And Strickland got through with a number of clean shots here, although to Adesanya's credit, he rose to his feet and absorbed a lot of these flush around the side of his guard. And Sean Strickland ensured that he was in the centre of the ring throughout this fight. He was the one that wanted to dictate the terms upon which this bout was fought. And Sean made a point to never surrender that real estate. He was insistent after defending that attack from Adesanya that you can see, of then firing back with his own attack straight afterwards. Sean wanted to make Make sure that he was in the center of the octagon and then on the few occasions that Adesanya found himself in the center, Strickland made sure to never take a back step. He wouldn't bite on the feints and he'd continually march forward until he got back towards the center. You'll see here Adesanya raise a knee trying to bait him to go backwards or bite on it but Sean Strickland is insistent on maintaining that real estate and he stays in the pocket. He wants this at boxing range. And then Adesanya finds himself behind the inner octagon lines. Now switching over to the Jan Blachowicz fight, this this wasn't immediately visible when they fought. Although as the fight drew on, it began becoming more of a feature where Jan Blachowicz wanted to make sure the distance was shorter between him and Izzy. And in this next example, you'll see that Israel Adesanya actually lands a low kick on the inside of Jan Blachowicz's leg, which he takes, but he doesn't take a back step. Jan Blachowicz marches forwards. He wants this in boxing range because that's also in takedown range. And then he ultimately gets his wish. He stopped biting on Izzy's feints. He paid him less respect in the striking department and got the takedown. And that was another element of the Jan Blachowicz game plan that Sean Strickland borrowed, although tweaked. He wasn't looking for takedowns. He just wanted this in boxing range so he could box Izzy. And so ahead of this Drickus Duplessis fight, while Izzy and Drickus are two very contrasting styles, it is interesting to recap. The striking tactics that Sean Strickland used to negate Izzy's offense and potentially against Drickus Duplessis, that could limit his success in the striking department, but that remains to be seen. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.